My name is Levi Padilla, and I was raised in Miami, but I'm originally from a small village in Honduras called Dora. My mom is, is from that village, but my dad is from a different area. They're both, they're both from Honduras, so is my stepdad. I'm actually an immigrant. Uh, my parents are immigrants. I am in the, I'm in the DACA program, but I had to go through the to crossing the border type of situation. It wasn't a, a flight type of thing. It wasn't a, a visa ending and I just stayed, no, it was, I, I had to actually go on a whole adventure crossing the border. I was around seven, eight, I think. It was, it was a very questionable time because as a child, I just, I just didn't know what was going on. All I, all I was told, oh, you're gonna go, go be with your mom. There were many points where I had to like question it. Where, where am I? Why, why, are you, why are you making me stay here by myself? There were, there were many moments where I was very alone. I felt very alone. When I crossed the border, I came here with my uncle. He was 17, so he was also underage. And we had to wait for my aunt to come pick us up. My aunt and both my parents were already here. When I crossed the border, I was, in, I was held in Texas. And I was going through the process and I was, we were waiting for her to come here. She was going through Greyhound, so it, it took some time for, us, for her to get to us. And once she picked us up, we went, came back to Miami and that's when I got to finally reconnect with my mom because she was the one that was waiting there for us. How was that when you finally were able to connect to your mom? Um, very emotional. Like I ran to my mom. I remember that day I, I ran with my little book bag on me. I, I was running to her. Because like, once I saw, when you know your parent, you know who your parent is. Like, And if you're far away from them, when you, when you have that moment that you see them, you just, you just want to go hug them. You want to be with them. As a child, I didn't know I was, I had that title. You know, I didn't know what a title of an immigrant was. It was just, don't speak about your title or anything like that. You know, I just, I felt like I grew up like any other kid. Went through school, elementary, from elementary, going from school to school, middle, high school. It was until like more, more middle school to high school where I kind of understood, oh, I'm an immigrant and, oh, I think one of my reasons why I moved from one school to another was because I was being bullied in elementary. Because the uh, when you're an immigrant, you're put you're put into this, the ESO program. So there was a kid that just didn't like me, and he he was always like make fun of me and call me a dumb ESO ESO kid or ESC because I I was also in the SPAD program. So he'll, he'll always call me a dumb ESC kid. So there was a moment in where I had, I just didn't want to go to school. So they had to transfer. Luckily, I moved to Miami Springs at the time. So it was, a, it was honestly a good time <laughs> to move schools. Back in 2016, um, I was actually going, I didn't go to CF, but I went to a small group of CF and that was, um, that was the men's group because a friend of mine invited me, me to it. Um, I didn't even know students was a thing. <laughs> so I thought it was just a men's group. So I, I went to this men's group and I really like it. Funny thing, that time I met Omar and it's crazy how like where he is now. So I met Omar and many other people that are like, that are pastors and it encouraged me. But at the same time, I still just went because like, I was just trying to please a friend. But then fast forward to 2018, where once I graduated, I already passed through so many like emo emotional things, so many problems in my life. I was very depressed, like very depressed. I destroyed my relationship with my ex-girlfriend and I didn't really know what to do. I was, I was very sad and not many things interest me. So, but the funny thing is that I know God was just like reminding me of like, hey, look, why don't you go to that small group? Why don't you go to that church? Because that later on, I, I saw that CF was behind my house. I used to live right behind the middle school where the Springs campus was. So 
I I had a conversation on a Saturday night with my friend, the same pr- the f- same friend that g- took me to that small group. Um, I f- and it was it was just very intimate, and and I told him, man, like I don't know, I'm very unhappy. Like I have a job, but like the money that I make doesn't make me happy. Nothing making is making me happy. I'm just very very sad, very depressed. And funny thing, after we were done that conversation, his dad calls him and tells him. Hey, uh, do you want? I'm gonna go to the service tomorrow. Do you want to come? And without even ask, asking me, he's just like, "Yeah, me and Levy are gonna go." I was just like, "Well, this is happening. I guess I'm gonna go." And I remember that night, I, I decided to out of randomly just pray on it, and I told God, "Whatever you want to tell me, just, I guess, take that time to tell me, because." you know where I'm at and I don't want to be here. Sunday comes around and I was still going through the emotions. I was not really wanting to be there, but it, I just felt that I had to be there, you know? So I got through through the service and it, it was very impactful to me. I felt like, man, like he came through. That he really spoke to me. He told me things that I, I needed to hear. I forgot what was the sermon about, but it was, I think it was one of the. It was, Pastor Rick. He was, it was a sermon about um, being attached to the things of the world, and when you know when God comes and takes us, like, are we ready, or are we gonna tell God, oh, I'm not ready because I have things that undone. I still have money, to spend, and. It was that God telling me, like, man, like, forget about the things that are making you depressed. Forget about everything that's that that are meaningless. Like, really, just lean on to me. You know, and you know how they do the altar call. Well, not the altar call, but when he he says, man, if you want to accept Christ today, in the count of three, like, raise your hand. It was the greatest experience that all I could say was just, it was him. And so the count, when Pastor Rick started counting down, at one out, I told myself, like, I don't have to. I don't have to raise my hand. I, I like, I already accepted Christ. At two, I was still fighting myself. I was like, come on, like, you don't have to. Like, you already accepted Christ. You already went to a church. You already did, did the whole co- getting connected with people. Like, you don't have to. You don't have to do all of this. Like, you can just keep going with your life. If you want to go to church, yeah, but like, you don't have to raise your hand. And I remember, I felt like time stopped for me. And before three, I just took a breath and I told I told him, Lord, whatever wave you want to send at me, I'm just going to grab a board and I'm just going to ride it wherever you take me. From now on, I don't want to try to take control of my life. I just want to, I just, I just want to ride it and just keep going and know that you're you're gonna keep me safe. So that's when I, and I, when he counted three, I, I raised my hand and I felt this, this baggage just come off of me. Like I, it was, I was very, very happy. There are many things, but I think the ones from the top of my head, it's just, just trust, trust and timing, trust, trusting him in many of my things, my finances and, in my personal life, in my spiritual life, that that I'm gonna be okay. And he's shown me so many times where I I try to control my life, where I was like, man, I have to do this, I have to do that. Oh, I should I should go to this job, I should go to that. God was like, wait a minute. Remember, it's not on your time. And I I said, okay, okay, I understand. And I fully trusted him, and he, he's taken me through many, through many of my struggles. And timing, timing is very, a big thing. Where it says just breathe. I don't. It's not. It's not right now. It's, it's, it's not the right time. Later on. My name's Levy, and I am safe. <laughs>